Hi, and welcome to a project for Sonic Pi 3, which I've been working on for several days now, and which has, in fact, started again from scratch at least twice, if not three times. Um, what I'm trying to do is this. When you play a MIDI um, input to Sonic Pi, it doesn't behave exactly the same as most doors do, in that when you play a MIDI note to them, when the note starts, then it starts playing a synth, and when you take your finger off the note, then it stops. With Sonic Pi, it's slightly different because the synths internal to Sonic Pi are controlled by means of specifying the note which you want to start on and the duration for which you want the note to sound. In other words, you need to know how long the note's going to sound when you start it running. And that's not really good for uh, MIDI input because it's okay if all the notes are the same duration, but if they vary, particularly if you have, say, some very long notes and there's some very short notes, uh, if you choose a short time to c accommodate the, um, the short notes, then when you get a long note, it's not going to last long enough. So what I've been working at is trying to use the synths in Sonic Pi so that you can effectively gate them. That is to say, start a synth going and leave it going for as long as you keep the key down and then chop it off as soon as the key uh, is released. Uh, that's one problem. The other problem is that if you want to do that with a keyboard input, you've got to uh, try and arrange to have a polyphonic input. That means to say up to, say, um, eight notes at a time being played. Because typically on a keyboard with ten fingers playing it, you might have, well, I suppose up to ten, but I've uh, limited it to eight because the resources are getting a bit um, hard-pressed, even with that. In fact, this program uh, it does not run successfully on a Raspberry Pi 3, although I have tested it successfully on a Mac, which I'm using at present because it's easier to video, and also on Ubuntu 17.04, uh, which runs the program quite satisfactorily. <coughs> so let's see how it works. What I've got on the screen <coughs> is the program, which is actually so long that it's in two parts. The first part just sets some um, uh, locations in the time system which are going to be used uh, this is a way of getting effectively sort of global variables which are safe. In other words, you can um, have several live loops uh, using them and they're not going to interact at all because they're written into the time system and you can read them at a certain time from the time system or indeed write back an updated value to the time system. And um, <coughs> by doing that, then you don't run into problems. But there are quite a lot of them. There are eight here which are going to hold the velocity with which MIDI keys are pressed and the eight notes. There are <coughs> eight which are going to hold the, uh, the note value which has been controlled. It's starting off at 60 there. There are eight which are going to say whether that actual synth has started operating or not, or whether it's switched off. And there are eight which is going to be used to signify to the MIDI controller that um, that synth is in use, so you've got to use another one. In other words, for scheduling them. And in that respect, there are eight LK1 to LK8, the last note, one up to the last note, eight, which holds the uh, note value for the last note that was played on that particular channel, so that when the key is released, um, the uh, system can pull through until it finds the correct note to turn off the synth for. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't know wh which note's being released unless you keep that information. On the um, iPad, which I use in conjunction with this, I can change the synth which is being used. You can see that. I'm going to change it now. And you can see some response on the uh, OSC cues coming back to Sonic Pi. And you can see that the pointer on the screen is moving as I tap different points. We'll leave it on try at the moment. I can set the transpose of um, all the notes. We'll leave it at zero to start with. And there's also a reverb which can be applied to all the notes. We'll leave it somewhere in the middle. And we can affect the volume of all the notes and also the cutoff value which is applied to them. Uh, underneath that there are eight markers, synth one to synth eight. You can probably just about see uh, there are some dark circles there. When I play a note it will actually show that that synth has been played. So enough talking, uh, let's look at the real program which is over here and um, that is um, not too long, it's quite repetitive in fact because each of the eight synth voices has the same bit of code 
which is repeated, just changing some numbers in it, so it applies to a different synth. And there are eight of those. And the other main part of the program is uh, the one which is going to, to take the MIDI input, which is all coming on one channel, and it's going to work out which synth to send the um, note values to. That's if it detects that um, B1 here is bigger than naught. That means to say that the velocity setting is bigger than naught, so a note is being pressed. It will then allocate uh, an available synth, if there is one, to one of these, and it will start that synth going. And when the notes are released, it's going to pull through the uh, note value, which is held in B0, and see whether it matches the last key uh, which was recorded for that particular synth. And when it finds one that matches, it's going to turn it off. So that is roughly how the program is going to run. And if we start this running again, here we go. Um, you've slight um, tweaks on the... Um, iPad settings as they're initialized and we're now waiting for some input. You'll notice there's some timing errors there. There are a few very small ones but they don't seem to upset things too badly because I'm trying to keep the time of the loops as tight as possible to reduce any latency or the latency of the program as much as possible. Let's just play a single note to start with. There we are, so that works. And you'll see that when I hold the key down, make it a bit quieter so you can hear it, when I hold the key down, you can see that the red lead underneath synth 1 goes on. If I keep that key down and play another one, because that synth is in operation, it allocates the second note to the second synth, and the third one to the third synth, and the fourth one to the fourth synth. And if you look at the screen, you can see that um, it's showing synth 4 is the last one allocated, and it's showing four ones are in use, and there's four uh, which are not allocated yet. And when I release all the keys, none of the eight synths are in use, and we're ready to allocate another one. So we can play up to eight notes at a time. Here we go. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Put another one down, we don't hear it. But if I take those off, I can play that note because it's now got room for it. So we've got eight note polyphony and we can play um, really anything we want. Notice also that we can, the keys are velocity sensors, so if I play quietly, I don't get much if I get louder with pressing ha. Huh. Put some reverb on, you get some really quite nice effects with this. We can use different synths as well. Let's go on to Pulse. I've got a two octaves mini keyboard here, but I can move that down if I want. It'll cover, if you have a larger keyboard, a bigger range of notes. We've also got some um, transpose on in the program. If I hold down a note, make it a bit quieter, I can transpose it up or down while it's running. And we can get uh, other keys, which will have, uh, other um, synths, which will respond very much to the cutoff, like TB303. There's quite nice organ sounds with this. You 
can even put some modulating pulses on. Let's put mod pulse on. Sounds pretty funky. So there we have it. Um, polyphonic um, eight note at a time synth which is gated so that you get it will last play for as long as you keep your finger on the key I think I set the key the um, synth to last for an hour if I didn't do anything else so an hour later it'll pack up but I don't think I can stand listening to it for an hour at a time hope you've enjoyed this I hope to publish the program shortly as I say it works fine on Ubuntu it works fine on a Mac uh, it's a bit uh, unworkable at the moment on uh, Raspberry Pi there. I will do some further work on that. Maybe with a cut-down version, we might manage to get something going there too. But uh, certainly a very nice little addition, I think, to the uh, what you could do with Sonic Pi. It just amazes me how much you can do. If you think of it, you can probably work out how to do it. Thanks for watching.